what your advice be to young gays? Um, neither confirm nor deny. And by that I mean don't, of course, get involved with your parents or anybody else in a conversation which leads to believe, them to believe that you are going to marry some person of the opposite sex with whom you've been to the movies twice. <laughs> On the other hand, don't waltz down to breakfast with the words, guess what? Can style get in the way of people getting to know each other? Oh no, it is the means by which people get to know one another. If you have about you all that you truly are, people recognize you at once. They know what uh, attitude toward you is relevant. Nobody ever talks to me about the weather. <laughs> Your style is a form of communication. I can't think of a question. Go on to the next card. <laughs> what technique do you use in making important decisions in your life? And is this technique applicable to many situations? Well, I actually never make decisions. Um, I started off in life with a weak character and if you have a weak character and you acquire an agent, your character falls to pieces altogether. <laughs> and now when people say to me in the street, hello, how are you? I reply, I have no idea, you'll have to ask my agent. What is your opinion of the New York taxis and taxicab drivers? I, I find them absolutely amazing. They are totally devoted to the theory of personality. <laughs> and at first, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't understand it, but that, now I do understand it a lot better. You see, if you don't like people, and you have driving skills, you would get your job in one of those lorries which drive right across the country and where you never speak to anybody. You hardly see anybody except the hitchhikers whom you ravish and whose used bodies you fling out into the hedges. <laughs> <laughs> but if you have driving skills and you do like people, then you have a taxi. Who will you meet? the rich, the desperate, and the famous. And on one occasion, I, <laughs> I was driving uh, in a taxi along Sunset Boulevard, and the taxi driver stopped the taxi and he said, I've got to ask you this, what do you do for a living? <laughs> and I said, I'm in the profession of being. And he said, I do a bit of that in my spare time. <laughs> what made you different? Why do you refuse to compromise when most people find it easy to do so? Well, I'm not a dropout. I was never in. <laughs> there was never the faintest hope. I would be able to disguise myself as a real person. <laughs> and after a bit, I, of course, if your every move is questioned, every word you say is contradicted, you must form an image of what other people think of you. You must stand outside yourself and look back and say, what causes all this comment? And finally, I understood what you can see in a second, that my sin was my inability to refrain from adding my entire being to whatever I was saying. Now in England this is more important than it is in America.
because the higher up the social scale you go in England, the smaller the movements become. And if you've been to Eton, you never move your face at all. <laughs> so having me standing there, swishing about, flapping my hands, rolling my eyes, all these signs were what my friends called a dead giveaway. <laughs> What do you do about your faults? You weave them into your style. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be anything. You just have to accept what you are. People have thought sometimes that when I recommend having a lifestyle, that I'm urging them to be more and more eccentric. In fact, one evening, a man said, all you want us to do is to wear funny clothes. I want you to wear funny clothes if you're funny people. <laughs> but if, when you look into your soul, you find you're ordinary, then ordinary you must be. But you must be so ordinary that you can imagine someone saying, come to my party and bring your humdrum friend, and that means you. <laughs> I'm afraid of flying. Since you come from a time without airplanes and now must do a great deal of riding, any advice? Go to sleep. <laughs> it's what I do on airplanes. I don't believe in jet lag. There's no such thing, especially when you come from England to America, because all the plane has to do is go up in the air and pause there and America comes by. 